I've always enjoyed living in the Berkshires because I find it to be a very unique, close-knit um, place to live. We have a very extensive vegetable garden. We've been getting beef and pork from a local farmer, and we get our own eggs from our chickens. So in eighth grade, um, a year ago, I saw what the high school students were doing with this food initiative, and I thought it was fantastic. And I just knew I wanted to become a part of it the second I got into high school. Brandon, Kurt, we come to the main office. I first started working with the food project my junior year. My friend Sophie Randolph graduated last year. She started the food initiative with Zoe Borden. Sophie Randolph and I were both part of the student senate. We both felt that an issue was school lunches. If I have to eat pizza, I will, but I don't know, it's never looked appealing to me. I bring my own lunch because I'm a vegetarian and they don't really offer vegetarian options in the cafeteria. We represent the student body. They want better lunches. I eat lunch almost every day in the cafeteria. We saw a lot of processed foods in our lunches. It doesn't have as many nutrients as fresh food. You get served cut peaches in syrup, but we have these amazing peaches that are grow out here. We have great apples that grow right, actually right next to us on Windy Hill Farm. And we're getting served apples in plastic bags that are pre-sliced. Why not tap into our natural resources? That really started the discussion about if it was even feasible to get local lunch in the cafeteria. And everyone at the PTA was like, yeah, we can do this. A community member had a connection to state representative Smitty Pignatelli. And about two weeks later, we had Smitty sitting in our cafeteria. He ate a lunch of fake ziti. Smitty Pignatelli recommended that we hold a roundtable meeting with people around the community to sort of garner support. Welcome to this meeting this morning. I'm Marianne Young and I'm the principal here at Monument Mountain. And students brought in community partners. Faculty. Matt Masiero from Guido's Marketplace. Art Ames and Matt Novick from the Berkshire Co-op. Right here. Smitty Pignatelli helped us invite uh, state representatives from the Department of Education, Public Health, the leader of Berkshire Grown, which is just centered around locally grown food in the Berkshires. Pretty much everyone showed up. Monument Mountain would, be, would like to be considered as a pilot project. For Our students have said we want to improve and really create a dynamic lunch program. Our food service personnel says you're asking us to do this, we really want to do that. But we are short-staffed, we are underfunded, we are regulated. We get two twenty-five for lunch that is supposed to pay for all the food that comes in, the payroll, the health insurance. You can't eat from McDonald's at um, $2.25. Uh, <laughs> we planned a local lunch pilot day. June, who is our head lunch lady in the cafeteria, she has this phenomenal veggie wrap recipe. And we thought that instead of using canned vegetables, that we would supply local vegetables. Sauteed zucchini squash, yellow squash, onions, garlic, cheese. Yeah, they love them. <laughs> the lunch was fantastic, and people really loved it. Our cafeteria purchases through Cisco, which in turn gets their food from other sources. Who knows where? <sighs> Shipping this food all around the world to get it into our cafeteria creates a huge amount of CO2, a main contributor to global warming. So for example, locally grown apples travel 61 miles, whereas conventionally sourced apples travel 1,726 miles. So you can see how much carbon that's really creating. It's, it's, it's a lot of carbon. We all really care about decreasing our carbon footprint because we live in such a beautiful place and we want to preserve that. The veggies that they have are usually always from the garden that's down there. Project Sprout was started five years ago by three students who decided that they wanted more local and fresh vegetables in the cafeteria. 
Here is our greenhouse, and here we grow radishes and lettuce during the winter, and other root vegetables that go up to the cafeteria. Kohlrabi, carrots, spinach, tomatoes. People come out on Saturdays, whether it's kids from the school or people around the community. We weed the garden, plant the garden, harvest. That food, in turn, gets served in the cafeteria. They bring in lunches from the local garden, and like fresh veggies and food, so that's kind of nice. One of our main problems at Project Sprout is that our main growing season is in the summer, when school is not in session. So we've been working with the Berkshire Co-op to create a bartering system. The students during the summer will give us their produce, we will sell that produce, and in the winter when they need that produce in return, in carrots and anything else, we'll simply give them that product in exchange. Once we had the pilot launch day under our belt, we were granted one day a month that we could totally take over the menu. Fresh food will have more nutrients and kids will have more energy during the day. Kids who are well fed can be focused, they can be engaged, they can do meaningful work in ways that other kids can't possibly. One of the main concerns that food services had was that they didn't have enough staff. You have to prepare fresh food. You can't just unfreeze it. You can't just take it out of a can. So it was more work, and that's where we stepped in to say, we'll help with that extra work. So we had students in the cafeteria mixing avocados. We had teachers cutting vegetables. But they were concerned that we weren't food safe certified. And so we said, you know what, we'll get food safe certified. Charlie Kelt and I went to a nine hour seminar we learned what temperatures foods need to be cooked at, how to avoid cross-contamination. We all passed with flying colors and received our certification. We planned a rotating schedule so that each of us could plan uh, with the help of a local chef each month. In October, I worked with Brian Alberg of the Red Lion Inn. I went to the Red Lion Inn and we sat down and worked out a menu. The Red Lion ordered a prize-winning steer from the local fair. And Brian Alberg was like, we want to use it for the lunch, for the local meatloaf. And then he actually had all the local farms delivered to him, and then he got all of it and delivered it to us. And then he cooked it with us, and students also helped out, and it was, yeah, it was a good day. <laughs> Not only was our meatloaf grass-fed, it was a really great opportunity for us to show students where our food is coming from. We realized that that local food day every month was a big process. We wanted to move it out of the students' hands and into the cafeteria's hands because we knew ultimately that would be the way to make it long-lasting. So we're aiming toward getting a few locally grown items in our lunches a few times a week. If we purchase more from local farms and local grocery stores, then obviously that gives them business. It'll increase the local economy and I think that's a great goal to work towards. Our generation, we're the ones that are going to have to be the problem solvers for tomorrow. And why not start here and reduce our carbon footprint by buying locally? <laughs>